Hi guys, it's Gina from Little Miss Nasty. We are here today to do our very first Q&A video. I've been wanting to do this for a while now and it is the time. And so me, Sophie, Talitha, and Taylor are spilling our guts for you. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the dirt. Hi, it's Taylor from Little Miss Nasty, also known as Lil Tay, Big Booty Tay, Tay Tay, uh, all those. <laughs> What's up guys? It's Sophie and I'm here to answer some of your questions. Here we go, questions with Talitha. What snack can you not live without? Chips. I'm gonna open this bag and eat them now. Mmm, these are double crunch hot wings. They're so good. You want one? If you had to choose one thing to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's the hardest question ever. Um, I don't know. I don't eat meat anymore, but like I could eat chorizo till I threw up. The chorizo that, like the, the Spanish chorizo that comes in like, and you like slice it with like a cracker and cheese and a slice of chorizo. Or... Or like sandwich and chips, like a sandwich with chips. And like you bite the sandwich and then you have a chip and it's like the crunch together. Or like a grilled cheese. I could have a grilled cheese every day of my life. Grilled cheese and tomato soup. I don't know. I, I love food. I love food. Uh, my favorite snack that I can't live without is probably bagels. I can't go a day without eating bagels. I can eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I love all flavors, everything. Pumpkin, plain, literally everything. I love pretzels, which is just like so bland and random, but they go really well with salty nuts or raw almonds. Pretzels, nuts. I'm a huge nuts girl. They give me lots of energy. They sustain me for a while. It could literally be my meal if I'm in a crunch and like need something before a show or whatever. And I also love goldfish. The snack that smiles back. How did you get such a great body? During COVID, I've struggled a lot more with like keeping my body looking the way that I like it to look. But basically before everything happened, just because my job was so active, like I was dancing seven days a week for hours at a time. And on top of that, I had a membership to a Pilates studio. I was doing a lot of hot Pilates, a lot of hot yoga classes, circuit classes, bar classes, just whatever I felt like. I worked out almost, I would say maybe five times a week i eat really light meals that are filling but not high in calories but you know sometimes i snack and sometimes i want a burger so i get a burger like i just eat what i want usually but really it's just because my job is so active that my metabolism stayed up high enough that i didn't really have to work super hard i can't give you any tips for an ass workout because honestly i'm not trying to grow my ass that's just how it looks i have a bubble butt and I was born with it. I do take the stairs more than I take elevators or escalators. So if there's an option to take the stairs, I take the stairs just to keep things tight. But that's really it. What do you eat to get a body like that? <laughs> I eat so healthy. I love healthy food naturally. Let's see, what do I eat? <laughs> In the morning, I have coffee with cream, dairy-free cream, like a nut-based cream, dairy-free yogurt, and I add some raw almonds, sprinkle a little cinnamon, sometimes fruit, a touch of banana or blueberries. Not a big like fruit girl. I mean, I am, but not always. For lunch, I usually make a salad. I'm a salad whore. I make the best salads ever. Gina's famous salad. So yeah, just leafy greens. I usually make like rice and beans or quinoa. I love tuna, hard boiled eggs, all the vegetables, hummus, Middle Eastern vibes, like. How's the NASM certification coming along? What are your plans for the fitness industry? Okay. The NASM certification is coming along slowly. I definitely had no idea so much went into becoming a personal trainer and I don't necessarily want to be a personal trainer, but I do want to be certified and be really knowledgeable in this field because it's definitely what I want to move into. It's been hard. I mean, I'm learning the anatomy and how the human body works. So it's definitely a challenge but i'm really enjoying it i want to be able to spread the knowledge that i already have personally with like my fitness journey accompanied with everything that i learn through the nasm certification i want to be part of people's fitness journeys i don't necessarily want to like train people in a gym like one-on-one -on -one. i don't find that 
super exciting. I do want to continue with my resistance fitness. The more knowledge I have, the better teacher I'm going to be. And I just want to be able to help people. I want to be a part of people's lives in that way. I want to be able to change lives. And I think this is a good route to go. And plus it's just a passion of mine. I've always been interested in fitness. How do you keep your body so nice? Do you work out? How do you keep your booty so nice? Uh, yes, I do work out. I work out almost every day. I love working out. I've been addicted to the gym for forever. I do a lot of yoga. I also do a shit ton of squats. I also was born with a booty, so that does help in the booty genre, so I don't have to do a lot of work to keep it nice. Just nice and toned and fit. What inspired you to start Little Miss Nasty? I always wanted to have a group of badass females, empowered women, just rock stars. I want to fucking rock stars. I love bringing groups of girls together. I love rock and roll. I love everything dark. I love everything edgy. I love pushing the boundaries. I love everything overly sexual. I love dancing. I love to make people feel a little uncomfortable. All of those together, little miss nasty. It's awesome when you get a group of empowered badass women together and do things we love like perform shoot videos photo shoot go on tour there's no limits there's no limit with all of us together doing what we love representing for all of the females out there little miss nasty is born when did you decide to join lmn and why when i moved to vegas i was taking classes from katie reese and she's a dancer that used to work in zumanity she used to live out here she recently moved to la she had mentioned to me one day after class that this group called little miss nasty was having an audition like i think maybe in a few days or something like that and i was like okay i'll check him out she was like you would be so good i think that you should audition and so i went home and I looked them up and I was like, oh hell yeah, I'm gonna go to this audition and I'm gonna fucking kill it. That's basically how I got started with LMN. I honestly didn't know about Little Miss Nasty before then and I probably wouldn't have found out about it without the help of Katie, but I'm so happy that I did and that I joined because Little Miss Nasty has brought so many great opportunities into my life and I love all of the girls that I dance with and I love dancing the show. What is the top item on your bucket list? It's like really hard to choose for me. It's like when people say like, what's your favorite movie? You're like, how do you pick that? I've decided that on the top of my bucket list is to make a lot of money and then I can do or go wherever I want. Be as creative as I want with no limitations on budget. I can create and I could travel, eat all of my favorite foods. I could do all the things that I want with massive amounts of money. So that's at the top of my bucket list is to make a lot of money. Make that paper. If you were stranded on a desert island with only three things, what would they be? Well, number one would be my puppy. I don't think I could go a day without her. And I think on a desert island, she would keep me company. Alcohol to pass the time. And probably movies to like pass the time too. Cause you know, I'm gonna be freaking bored. I would be stranded with a pop-up shower, a boat to get back to the mainland or a helicopter. No, fuck helicopters, that's scary. Um, And my cell phone. Well. I would probably want three things that would get me off of that island. So I'm going to say a raft, a flare gun, and dehydrated food. Like a bunch of it in a backpack. I want to be stranded on an island and I want to be lucky. I don't want to be stranded with like a book, sunscreen, and I don't know, my phone. Actually, that wouldn't be that bad. So if I was stranded on a desert island, I would want a raft, a flare gun, and dehydrated food. Let's be practical. Top three makeup products you must have for a live show. Okay, I for sure, for sure have to have my Fenty highlighter, the gold Fenty highlighter, for show. Sure. I have to have a red lip and most of the time it's lip scents because I'd be like rubbing my lips on myself with my hands or, or like on Gina's body. So I, have to have lip scents because that shit stays on. I mean, I guess I have to have liner. I don't have a specific liner that I use. I have an NYX one that's like super thin that I have on right here that I really like. Those are my three products for sure. I need to have highlighter. I need to have a red lip and a liner. 
Top three makeup products that I need for a live show is black lipstick, powder because I get so sweaty. I sweat literally so much. I sweat a lot. So I need to touch up my face afterwards. Plus I feel like my lipstick gets all over my face during the show because I'm freaking licking everybody. And then probably dry shampoo because I guess that's not really a uh, makeup product, but dry shampoo for sure because my hair gets super wet and it helps with the sweat and kind of keeping it like out of my face. Okay, so I'm not a huge makeup girl, but I do know what I love and I love it. As far as products go, I'm obsessed with perfume. Like, I don't know if this counts, but every live show you're gonna smell me because i squirt at least 20 squares throughout my favorite gucci rush oh my god it's such an interesting smell it smells like nothing you've ever smelled in your life i don't even know how to classify this in terms of like floral musky something else it's something 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 else if you want a wicked a unique smell gucci rush also my second favorite perfume at the moment is calvin klein women i'm almost out oh my god it's amazing i also love mark jacobs decadence that has the same vibe it's kind of mus musty <laughs> musky i guess i like musky things that smell like men's cologne but i'll dabble in like whatever scents as far as makeup your girl has to have her lip stain two of my favorites i've been wearing for a couple years Too faced lady balls it's my favorite red to wear this darker one this one's called Drop Dead Red. You need a lip stain for a stage or else your lipstick's gonna be everywhere. We're so interactive with each other. You never know who's gonna be rubbing your face or where your face is gonna be rubbing. I love a good highlighter. I wanna be fucking highlighted, you guys. Just like, I wanna shine on stage. So I use Tarte, Tarteus Pro Glow To Go. I really love it because it smells like cake. First up is a solid foundation currently i am using fenty and i love it like one of the best foundations that i've ever used uh, i like fenty and i like kat von d foundation as well her stuff is really good so you gotta have a good base just because you get so sweaty and you don't want your makeup running second is a really good eyeliner honestly you don't even have to get like a really expensive eyeliner the one that I use today is an e.l.f. Cosmetics, and I think that it's actually pretty decent. You just want something, like I like a liquid liner that is matte and doesn't rub off. NYX is also a very good brand. I like NYX and Kat Von D if you want to get like a more designer eyeliner. Kat Von D tattoo liner is pretty decent. And then I would say the third thing is a really good lipstick like if you can only wear three products on your face for the show you would want foundation eyeliner lipstick i mean i hate to say it but one of my favorite lipsticks to use is jeffree star his lipsticks are really fantastic also i know that some of the other girls use lip scents that's a really good one but it smells like nail polish remover i have it in black and red and it's not my favorite to use but it does stay on your lips if you could have a one night stand with a celebrity who would it be again like what kind of questions are these um um, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go with a girl because like I can't think of a guy, but I'd want to have like a one night thing with like Kalani or Halsey. Those are my like two girl crushes. Who I'd want to fool around with, like a celebrity. Guys, I don't know. I, I don't know. But those are the two that come to mind. I've been like seeing them on my Instagram a lot and I'm just like... Uh, how are you so beautiful? So yeah, those are my celebrity crushes at the moment. If you could have a one night stand with a celebrity, who would it be? <sighs> and this is a hard one because I really love Brad Pitt. I really love Johnny Depp. I don't know which one I would pick. Both age beautifully. I would, I would sleep with them as old men like they are right now. Can I pick both? <laughs> I want both. I want both of them in my bed. That's who I would sleep with for a one night stand. I want both of them. Johnny Depp and Brad Pitt, one on each side. Oh my god, but now I'm thinking, would I want a girl? How many times have you been in love? Are you single? How many times have I been in love? I thought I was in love before, but I don't think I was actually in love. I think a part of me like loved them, but not to the extent that I know love now, if that makes sense. Can you hold still? Hey, I'm in love with her. <gasps> oh, thank you. 
Thank you. I am not single. I do have a boyfriend. I've dated him for four years. He is my absolute world and I love him with all my heart. We have our own place together. We have our own puppy. I'm so happy. Top five favorite movies. You guys are gonna die because I hardly watch new movies. So my favorite movies are taking you back, okay? They're classics. I love Beetlejuice. Who doesn't? I love Home Alone. Like, what am I, five years old? I love Kill Bill. Oh, Charlie Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I mean, <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's like on the top. Okay, so we have Beetlejuice, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Home Alone, Kill Bill, Hocus Pocus. Oh, fuck you guys. Wizard of Oz, Beetlejuice, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Home Alone. <laughs> what? She's judging me right now. Huh? Do I have a favorite routine in the show? Uh, my favorite routine would probably have to be Cherry Bomb because it's my solo. I fucking love that dance. It makes me feel so amazing. The outfits are so fucking cute and I just feel fucking great when I'm doing it. It's just so much fun. It feels like I can finally like express myself in a routine fully. It's a style I love, an amazing routine and I absolutely love it. And I get to be interactive with the crowd. I have a little sucker when I'm like dancing. So I'll go into the crowd and I'll even give someone my lollipop that was pre-corona though so i don't know how that's gonna work anymore kind of sad but yeah so i get to interact with the crowds and i really do i just love it and i get to dance on all of you so it's absolutely amazing next question is how do you feel about being an influencer and role model any advice for people watching i don't necessarily think of myself as an influencer but i do i do think i have an influence on people i love it but i also feel like it's a pretty big responsibility yeah, like sometimes I don't want to say the wrong thing on my social media, but I have found that it's just best to be yourself no matter what. And there's always going to be people that like disagree with you, hands down, like for sure. But just being yourself, I think is the advice that I would give. If you feel like you're really passionate about something and you want to share it on your social media, do it. There's always going to be people that don't agree with you and don't care to see that on your social media and you kind of just have to do you. If it's something that's important to you or you feel really strongly about, then go for it. That's my advice. Just be yourself. Be as genuine and as transparent as you can be. If you're not feeling it one day, share that too because people want to see all sides of you. They want to see the, the good and the bad, the weird. I have been in love one time and I am not single. Most of you would know that, I think. When did Little Miss Nasty start and how long did it take to make the dream a reality? 2012 in Los Angeles. Even then we had dreams of touring. We're like, just wait until we tour. Even though our show was like such a small little production and definitely not ready to do anything remotely close to touring. But yeah, 2012, we started the Viper Room, Sunset Strip. We kind of caught a buzz in the LA scene and that helped us branch out to do more residencies. Like if anyone remembers the Key Club on the Sunset Strip, right down from the Viper Room. Shout out to the Key Club. <laughs> we also started performing at the Abbey, world's most famous gay bar in West Hollywood. We had a few LA based residencies before we created our big show and moved to Harvell's. Once we established our Harvell's residency, that's when things really took off for us. It literally spread like word of mouth. People were just telling their friends, Little Miss Nasty's once a month, you guys have to go. So badass, it's so much fun. As soon as we started that residency, our shows were sold out every single month. And I think that's when we're like, this is something good. I mean, we always knew it was good, but this is when we were like, shit, this is legit. Like people are eating it up and we're never gonna stop now. <laughs> Shortly after, our residency started at Harvell's. We got the call. Miss Maria Brink, her manager, call us up and say, hey, Maria wants you to go on tour seven weeks within this moment. Shit, now we can take this show, build it into a tour production, and take it around the entire United States, reach all these people we never had access to. That was 
the breaking point for Little Miss Nasty's success. Thank you, Maria. Little Miss Nasty loves you. What has been your most memorable experience on tour? We toured within this moment on the last tour. Maybe Baltimore? I just remember getting out of my bus and there was, it was like midday maybe that we got there and there was already a line forming outside of the building. And after like getting off the bus, like getting ready on the bus, getting off to go into the venue for the show, the line was wrapped around the whole entire block. There were so many people there and that show was the most packed show that I think we've done. Like there were so many people and they were screaming and they loved us. Being able to be on stage and look out at everyone and like seeing a sea of people, like that's an experience that sticks with you for the rest of your life. It's so amazing to see all those people there. Everyone loves the bands. They love that type of music. They love that vibe and everyone's a family and ready to like fucking have a good time. Performing for crowds like that is the best feeling that you could ever have. Really, any time that we've had done a show where it's the crowd is great, that's a memorable show for me. The crowd energy is like what I what I love, like what I need for a great show. It was fantastic and I loved it. Who's the wildest when you're on tour? Jessie. Hands down, she's the wildest. She handles her liquor really well. She's not afraid to just do whatever she wants to do. She's the most wild. She's the most fun to party with. She just has a good time and she loves life. I mean, we all have our moments where we're like the most wild, but I would say Jessie overall is probably the craziest in the best way possible. What is the naughtiest thing you've ever done? I don't know what the, I don't know what naughty is, means to people, but fiance and I have been together for 12 years and I'll just say that we've done some fun things in fun places. We've been naughty in some some pretty fun places. Yeah. Waterfalls. Hawaii. That was a good time. David, if you're watching this, that was... We've done some naughty things in places. How was it touring with In This Moment? In This Moment is badass to tour with. Their whole team is spectacular. Their crew was so helpful on our first tour. They basically showed us the ropes, gave us all sorts of pointers. The band is just very, very sweet. They're all supportive. They would come watch side stage and be like, good show. You know, it's just like, it's just one big tour family. And the fact that we went on tour in 2017, we had more dates in 2018, we went on tour in 2019. You know, it's just so cool that in this moment, so loyal and they love to keep their people around them. Tour is like my favorite thing ever. If I could tour all the time, like in this moment, my life would be complete. It's funny because when you go on tour, you're kind of like, this is so hard, I'm so fucking tired, like I miss my shower, I miss my toilet, I miss my animals, I miss my life. It is exhausting touring, I'm not gonna lie. Like being on the road for weeks at a time takes a lot out of you. I miss my cat, I miss my bed, I miss not having to brush my teeth in a gas station bathroom and like taking showers in my house. So tour is very exhausting, but I think what keeps my energy up is, you know, the people around me, if their energy is like up and good, then I'm feeling good. And also doing shows, you have a really good show, it will last you for the next week, you know? Like you can ride that high for a while. So I would say what keeps my energy going through tour would be the fans. Simple as that. Good show, good energy, I'm good. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to the next city and fucking kill it. When did you feel that you made it as a dancer? I've gone from like one goal to another, but I think my first VMAs, cause you grow up watching the VMAs, especially as a dancer and being like, oh, I just, I wanna be one of those dancers there. I wanna be performing behind one of those artists on the VMA stage. It was just like the biggest show that you could be a part of. My first VMAs, I was 18 years old and I was dancing for Beyonce. And I literally was like, nothing could be better than this ever. Like this is, like, how do I top this in my dance career? Like, how am I, how am I gonna be better? So I thought I'd made it there. There was a lot of moments like that where I was like, what's gonna be better than this? But that was the first time for sure that I was like, oh my God, like, I made it. I'm here. This is what I wanted to do with my life and I did it. I'm doing it right now.
What is one weird thing that you wouldn't know about me unless I told you? I was diagnosed with a learning disorder when I was about 11 years old. I do have ADD and dyslexia, so I never thought I was gonna get through high school, let alone college, but I really tried and like forced myself to really study and to get better and to just really focus on my school. And I got through college in three and a half years, which I was really excited about, but not many people know about my disorder just because it's not something I openly tell everybody just because no one can even tell usually when they meet me. My boyfriend like obviously knows like all my friends know and they can kind of tell as like they get to know me a little more I'm on a personal level like I'm always have to be like doing something I'm always very hyperactive I move around a lot I can't really sit still but that's why I love dance because it lets me express myself and lets me get all my energy out oh my god I can't fucking talk oh my god okay Regroup. I keep itching myself I'm like why am I so itchy I need to stop I have weird tics, so annoying. Um, do you really want to know? <laughs> Shit, there's obviously so many weird things because I am a really weird human, but Mark, what's a weird thing? Oh my God, I can burp sentences. I could literally belch song lyrics. I think that's something weird. I really want to get my cat stuff. When my cat passes away, we are stuffing her in our favorite position of her just so we can cuddle her and look at her every single day and the position is arms straight down with a head tilt. Oh my gosh, she's gonna be so cute posted up in our little windowsill. She's basically a famous cat now in Los Angeles. Tons of passerbyers always admire her in the window and I feel like if she ever passes away soon they would be sad that she's not there to greet them. I mean there are so many things that are weird about me like everyone has weird habits and weird things I'm trying to pick a really good one. I, I don't know because a lot of them are really good but which one would I want you guys to know? I used to love to pretend to be a dog when I was little. Like I would make my mom put a bowl of water on the floor in a bowl of cocoa puffs and I would eat out of the bowls on the floor, on my hands and knees, run around the house pretending to be a dog. I used to make my mom use a spray bottle whenever I got on the couch, like bad dog, get off the couch. So <laughs> I was a crazy kid and my mom played along. So she's crazy too. That's probably the weirdest thing that I've, I've ever done in my entire life. I don't like promote this, but I'm a little bit of a klepto. I, um, I mean, I used to be, a, uh, like when I was younger, I definitely used to like steal. It was just like such a rush for me. Like I really enjoyed stealing and I not, didn't necessarily steal from like friends or people that I know, but like I used to steal candy from the store across my dance studio a lot when I was younger. It was really weird. But now it's more of like, if I'm like writing with a pen, like if I'm like signing a check, at dinner with a pen and I like really like the pen. I'm like, I gotta have this pen. And I just like take it. The amount of pens that I have collected from like hotels and restaurants and it's just ridiculous. Or like if I'm on a job and I'm like at the crafty table, I'm like, ooh, there's some free, uh, there's some tangerines here and I'm gonna take about 10 in my bag and take them home. Yeah, like I'm a little bit of a klepto. Not in a bad way. I don't steal from my friends. You don't have to like worry about being around me, but I kind of get a rush of like taking stuff. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm proud of that actually, but there you guys go. Goals or habits developed during this quarantine year. I started skateboarding. I'm trying to learn tricks right now. I can kind of do an ollie. I longboard a lot. I haven't been because it's really hot in Vegas right now and you really can't go outside until it's nighttime. And then by then it's kind of unsafe to be longboarding because if you hit a crack or a rock, you fly off your board. So I started skateboarding. I also started streaming on Twitch. You can catch me at Lush Vicious. So uh, I started streaming. Basically, I'm just trying to get good at skateboarding. Like I want to be really good at it. If you weren't doing Little Miss Nasty, what would be your next dream job? Well, you guys know I'm dying to be a rock star. I want to fucking rock. I want to be on stage. I want to sing my ass off, perform for everybody. If I wasn't performing or doing something artsy or producing shows or music or whatever, I love fashion and creating. I would 
love to be a fashion designer i mean i sort of am but a full-blown fashion designer if i had the chance i love video editing it's one of my favorite hobbies ever i could do it for hours i love 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 editing videos i also love cooking really healthy food and i've always dreamed of having gina's famous kitchen where i cook Gina's famous everything so you guys can come and I'll make you Gina's famous coffee Gina's famous chicken noodle soup Gina's famous salad Gina's famous you name it Halloween is my favorite holiday ever literally ever I decorated for Halloween the first of September which shows how fucking psychotic I am I love it because the fall weather is my favorite I love all the spooky decorations just the spooky vibe in general all the scents all the decor like literally everything I absolutely love it I love it so much and yeah I literally my house is already decorated for Halloween I'm just fucking crazy when it comes to Halloween and stuff do you believe in ghosts have you ever had a paranormal encounter or experience I absolutely believe in ghosts one definitely i've never had a super crazy paranormal experience but i will say i don't know she might kill me but my stepsister kind of communicates with ghosts a little bit like people from that have passed on since we were little she was like kind of like visited whether it was in a dream or at night like they kind of like spoke to her and they would like relay messages through her I remember this one time we were like laying in bed and our beds were like really close together and she was like crying and I was like, Jenny, what's wrong? What, what's wrong? And she, her grandfather had passed away and she was just like, my grandfather's here. And I was like, yes, I 100% believe in ghosts. I think they are real and I think they walk among us. I do think that my parents, cats and dogs haunt our house, but not really human, if that makes sense. On the countertop, at my parents house they have like a coffee cup like sitting on the counter and we're all like in the kitchen and all of a sudden okay i'm in the middle of a story she likes to interrupt me in the middle of the our conversation we see this coffee cup slowly like tip over there's like no one bumped it no one nothing happened like nothing i definitely think it was like my cat like on the counter just like him saying haha screw you guys and like bumping it off favorite thing about halloween the movies are the best scary movies horror movies disney channel halloween movies i would say probably my favorite halloween movie i mean i don't want to be cliche but i would say hocus pocus i also really love halloween town though oh i, I even forgot about harry potter i love Harry Potter. What's the most embarrassing stage moment for you? It was one of our last shows at our very first Las Vegas residency and we performed to the Stooges, I Wanna Be Your Dog, One Girl's on a Leash, One Girl's Walking the Other Girl. Since it was our last show, I was like, I'm gonna do this topless. So I was in my little exes. I was the dog, which is weird because I'm never the dog, but Jessie was walking me, so I'll let her guide me. I'll let her take advantage. I'll let her dominate. So we walk out. The song is about to start. We preset on stage and I literally go like this and my nipple tape slides off. So I'm bare breasted on one boob and nipple tape on the other. The song is starting. The lights go up. I'm on a fucking leash and I was like, oh my god, my boob is out. My boob is out, Jesse. My whole boob. And the nipple tape was so sweaty that there was no way I could like pick it up and just stick it back on. It was gone. Like nipple bulging. Dance is starting. No turning back. So I did the entire dance with my boob out <laughs> and it's in Vegas. So there are a million topless shows and it's like not absurd to be like, oh, here's my nipple on stage. But for me, it is because I don't do shows like that. I never strip fully. Showing my nipple tape is like the most I'll go. So here I am on the ground crawling across the stage with that nipple flying out to the audience. And since it was one of our last shows, everybody in the world was there to come support. It was an audience full of faces I knew and they all got to see my nipple. So that was fun. How has quarantine been? Quarantine has had its ups and downs. Right now, I'm feeling really motivated. I'm studying. It hasn't been too bad for me. I mean, I'm not working and I miss working. I miss dance, I miss performing, but I'm like super grateful that I have my home and fiance and my dog. You guys wanna see my dog? I'm gonna bring Foxy in here. Hey, here's Foxy. <laughs> I just like woke her up from sleeping, so she's not happy. But I'm like super grateful that I have, oh God. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm grateful that I have her. What do you hear? What is that? What is that? Who is it? Who is it? What? Who is that? <laughs> okay, she's over it, but I have 
Foxy and I'm super happy you had that. Do I need a touch up? <laughs> How did you come up with the idea for LMN? There was space for something new and badass. I didn't want to do anything that had already been done. Growing up in the professional dance scene in Los Angeles, I was already a part of so many dance groups, girl groups, burlesque groups that I knew what their shows were like, what music they were using, what vibe was behind the main essence of the show. I was super particular and careful to not copy anything. Even songs that would be so perfect in Little Miss Nasty, if I was in a different show and they've already done that song, there was no way I was putting it in the show. I wanted to be original. I didn't want to do what people were already doing. Like, that's stupid. Hello. <coughs> oh, God. Hi, it's Taylor from Little Miss Nasty. Um, I have a hair on my lip. It's driving me crazy. Can I see it? I don't know where it is. It's driving me nuts. Oh, okay. I got it. It's when I kissed Foxy. You like my mug? <laughs> Miss you, can't wait to see you. If you guys haven't already, please check out our previous videos. We made a vlog over the past two years highlighting all the fun things we did. So I'll link that down below if you guys wanna check out our videos. You need to get your own Little Miss Nasty swag, you guys. We have the cutest stuff out right now. We make couture also. So everything you guys need and more is at littlemissnastyofficial.com. It's linked down below, check it out. Make sure you subscribe subscribe and hit the like button hit that little bell too to turn on alerts so anytime we post you guys get a notification you won't miss any of our new upcoming videos i think the most memorable experience i would say is when our bus tire flew off while we were on the freeway that was pretty crazy the whole thing just flew off the bus we ran over it. I thought we ran over a deer. Yeah, and then we had to drive around in a suburban for like a week while the bus got fixed. That was a pretty crazy time. <laughs> Very memorable. Let's go.